Holly generously donated an EFI system to replace our carburetor, modeled after a Mustang Street 6 engine. And it will work with our car, but we have an older cylinder head and a smaller temperature sending unit. So Dad and I had to come up with a workaround. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna put in is our coolant sensor, but to do that we have to take out the old one and they say that it's a good idea to drain a little bit of coolant, so that's what we're gonna do next. So, hold. Oh, wow! Oh, that's not where I thought it would come out. No! Was that bad? Yep. Did it spray all over the Okay, do it more. Do it again. How's okay, that? Is that yeah, that's good. I'm just barely cracking it. You got it. <laughs> Was that stressful? Did some coolant come out or something? Dad, that's not the size. That's not it? This is the coolant sensor. So this is the original coolant sensor. This is the one we were given. They're massively different. So yeah, we're gonna have to figure out an adapter of some kind. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we I think we might have a solution for the problem of this needing to go where this was. Okay, so we have this adapter which fits on this. The only problem is that the sensor on the end is too big to go through here. So, we are going to try and slowly ream out the center to this size, which is just barely big enough for this to fit into. So we have to get it to this size, which is pretty big. So we have a three-step drill slowly going up in size to hopefully make the transition easier. Oh, that was good. No, no, this is good, Elle. This looks right down the middle. Let me get you the sensor. Okay, so we think we have the sensor figured out. So, like we said, we figured this out. We fixed the threading up here because it was a little wonky and there's just barely enough sensor sticking out. Dad's gonna put it in and I really hope this works because if it does, it's going to save us from doing a whole bunch a of lot stuff. of work. Please work, please work. Yeah, I think we're gonna go. I think we're gonna do hand tight, and then if we have leaks later, we may use a little bit of a wrench. But the thing, the threads are so fine that. Yeah. But I think it'll. I think that's in there. Because we've heard the pressure in this system is not very high. It's like 12 or 16 yeah. PSI. We are going to go with that. Yeah. Don't touch it! It's in. We were really happy that the adapter and sensor fit in the hole. But when we tightened it in and filled it up with coolant, we saw a leak. So we knew we had to make it tighter. And we didn't get it on camera. But when Dad went to tighten the adapter, unfortunately the thin threads broke. But it was okay. We were working with another company who also produced coolant temperature sensors, which were the correct size and it had the right connector on the back. So we thought maybe it would work, but we had to test it first. So we have the old one out and you can see that they're about the same size as the base and stuff and they have the exact same connectors on the bottom. It's only thinner and longer and will actually fit when we try to thread it. We are going to plug both of the sensors in, and then Dad will stick the coolant, that's what it's called, the coolant sen temperature sensor. There you there go. There we go. Uh -huh. Then Dad will stick the coolant temperature sensor into boiling water to see if it will actually read, and then we'll do the exact same thing with the new sensor that we got and see if it reads the same. If it doesn't, we'll try this again, but if it does, we can just go with this. So. We got the sensor plugged in. This is the original sensor, um, and right now it's reading 80 degrees 
Um, Dad is about to stick it in boiling water, and we will see what it reads then. All right, here we go. Okay. I'm pouring some in. Ah! All right. Don't spill any. The car is susceptible to leakage. Here it goes. It's in. Oh, wait. It's going up. Um, it's going up. It's still going up. Okay. Um, it just kind of stopped. It's at 185. 185 right now? Right now, yeah. Okay, go ahead and turn it off. Uh, the car. Yeah. 186 was the final reading. Okay, I'm changing the sensor. Okay. All right, new sensor's on. Go ahead and turn okay. it back on. Okay, it says 112. It says 112. Yeah. Uh, and here it is going in the water. What does it say now? 210, but it's still going up. Yeah. Okay, so that obviously didn't work. This was not uh, doing it right, because obviously the temperature was way off, so. Fortunately, we cannot use this anymore. So, we are stuck with this one. At this point, we were starting to run out of options, and we were getting desperate. So, we decided to take a field trip. Look at me driving! This sensor with the EFI system has been giving us a little bit of trouble. So, we were like, okay, we'll go to machine shop. Let's see if they can just machine it down, and then we'll tap it and get threads on it. Okay, so that didn't work. Um, like the machine shop guy said, the inside here was hollow, so when we were cutting it down, we got a hole, which it's actually kind of cool to look in, but we're left with two options, which are taking out the head of our engine um, and bringing it to a machine shop and having them actually cut a big enough hole where the sensor needs to be. Or we know an engineer who will do some electrical work for us to see if we can make the other sensor, the one that fits in, work. So we're going to go figure out which one of those we're going to do, and we'll come back and tell you what we decide. So, yeah. We considered letting our friend who had offered make a new sensor box, which basically meant it would translate the new sensor to the Holly sensor, but there were all kinds of questions if it would work or if it would break in the future and what we would do. So we had one option. We had to take the head out, get it to a machine shop, and have the hole drilled bigger. We will be taking it to the machine shop to have this fixed. The next morning, we loaded the head up and we took it to the machine shop that actually worked on our engine in the first place. And since I have my permit now, I got to drive the whole way, which was kind of fun. When we got there, we showed the guys where we wanted to drill, but they had a few concerns. The port for the original sensor, which we wanted to get drilled bigger, was very close to one of the head bolt holes, and they were worried that if they actually drilled it, they would cut into the bolt hole. We thought we were through. We thought this had all been a waste, and we were taking the head off for nothing. But thankfully, the clever people at the machine shop had an idea. Okay, so it's looking like we're not actually going to have to drill into the head, which is very Yay! Um, so at the front of the head is a... Yeah, just an outflow tube that uh -huh. goes to the heater core. Yeah, so we're going to put a T-fitting there and then put the sensor on there so that we don't have to drill into anything 
It's going to be a simpler solution and it should work. Yes, we realized that we could actually put a T fitting on the hose going to the heater core. So we picked up a T fitting and the machine shop guy actually ended up taking 200 thousandths off the top of the adapter so that we could easily screw it in with enough clearance. And once the T fitting was in, they put the rest of it together for us. We made our way home and the next day it was time to put the engine back together. In. It was back quite, in. <laughs> back in. That was quite difficult. Yeah, harder than taking it out. Yes. <laughs> so our fix for um, our sensor issue is towards the front of the engine, um, right near the alternator. Now, we had to put a T fitting on, which made where the hose goes in a little bit longer which hits the alternator at the moment. Thankfully, we thought about that, so we got a elbow, and we're going to put the elbow in, and then the original thing that the hose goes in, and that should make everything work. So fingers, that's what we're gonna do now. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, really, right? That's it. Until so you get that leverage. All right, girl. Yeah, you're not touching it. Uh huh. Yay! Oh, you did it. Nice. Nice work. What are you putting in? The original sensor so that this hole doesn't leak or anything. <laughs> Never mind. And finally, after a full episode of waiting, we're gonna finally put the sensor in. <laughs> Let's take a look and see. I think that's, good. I think that's great. So, this was quite a process. With the smaller sensor and the older style cylinder head, this was pretty hard to figure out, but we did it. And while we ended up not having to take the cylinder head off, I'm glad we did, because I don't think we could have come up with the solution that we did without the machine shop guys. And if you happen to have the exact same engine as we do, you won't have to take the head off of your car. You're welcome. <laughs> if you want all the details on the part numbers and stuff we used, it's in the description. So what I'm taking out of the garage is that problems that you don't see coming happen and you just have to keep going and you'll eventually figure it out. Thank you to Holly for sending us the Sniper EFI. We are so ready to get it in. And thank you to the people at the machine shop who helped us through all of our problems. <laughs> As always, thank you to Drew Carter, my executive producer, and if you would like to support me, go to my website at elliesgarage.com where you can find my Patreon and links to my merch. I'll see you next time in the garage for the big episode with the Sniper EFI!